but and it's so it's part the, the last part of that is just a shot of the castle raising and the date and it's supposedly coming next year and they said that they went out of their way to say that they're aiming for 2022 which means you know maybe maybe not we'll, we'll see but I, I think the thing that's most interesting is all the theories that are flying around right now about is it set across multiple timelines? Are you playing different characters? How does it tie into these other Zelda games? Because there's a lot of things that are pointing towards Skyward Sword. Obviously, the idea that you're playing uh, in the islands above Hyrule, which, as we know, all the lands above Hyrule were featured as the Skyloft in Skyward Sword. We are getting a Skyward Sword remastered version right. here pretty shortly, which is like, oh, should you brush up on your Skyward Sword lore as you get ready for Breath of the Wild 2? Because maybe they're tied closer together. Um, we see a lot of stuff from uh, that hints at uh, uh, potential ties to Twilight Princess. You know, Link's uh, cybernetic looking arm here looks a lot like the stuff that we saw from uh, Twilight Princess. Um, right. But I think it's also important to remember that... Um, the original Breath of the Wild had a ton of other references to older Zelda games, the Koroks, you know, stuff tied to Majora's Mask, um, different locations that were kind of burned out or, or, or uh, you know, knocked down in, in across Hyrule. So this could be like, obviously it's all pure speculation and maybe this stuff that's tying in is just like a nice wink and a nod, but maybe it does have bigger ramifications on the story. Um, obviously we're, we're just going to have to wait and see what that means. It did feel weird that we got Skyward Sword announced uh, for Switch when there are a lot more obvious Zelda games, but maybe things are starting to connect now with all of this. Mm. Uh, Casey, one thing that I find really peculiar about this this trailer uh, is that we never really see Link's face. Um, mm -hmm. And now there are tons of theories about what that means. Could we be looking at like a multiple Link scenario? Uh, we've seen <laughs> many Links in the past before with Four Swords Adventures. That's always a, a more sort of campy approach. Uh, and obviously we saw Zelda in the original teaser for this game. What's going on with the playable character in this game? Yeah, I noticed that too, that you never see Link's face in any of the gameplay in this, which really weirded me out, but it looks like they're very distinctively two different characters. There is one Link, we assume, in the sky and another Link on the ground. Uh, not only is their hairstyle different, but it looks like the one with the long hair that is up in the sky primarily is the one with the weird arm. However, we do see the one on the ground have some attachments on the left arm, but the left arm doesn't seem deformed in any way, but he does use a flamethrower attachment, which is pretty cool. But there are a lot of theories going around that the link on the ground is actually just a, like might just be a placeholder. And maybe they're just gonna like uh, just kidding, it's it's been Zelda the whole time. I don't know if that's actually gonna happen or not. But it looks like they're very distinctively two links and as Zach was saying, are these two links across two different time periods? And I think one of the things that hints to that is that the link in the sky they their shoes look pretty primitive compared to the boots and equipment that the link that we right. know from breath of the wild i have so many questions there is so much treehouse and i rewatched this trailer like 12 times because i was so interested mm -hmm. <laughs> in everything that joe, goes on joe what was what was something that really stuck out for you in the show did you were you, you you were flipping out watching this like the rest of us right oh yeah absolutely like this is this is all i could have hoped for like you say it's a minute and a half just full of things to speculate on and th so what the arm is the thing that got me but specifically the fact that it seems to presage the idea that this isn't just a sequel to breath of the wild that's going to use the same mechanics in a new place in a new setting with a new story like we see new abilities in there we see new weapons you know you're obviously expecting a certain amount of that stuff but i think it's easy to forget now that it's what four years later and a lot of people think it's the best right. game ever made that breath of the wild did loads of stuff that we weren't expecting and it, it encouraged you to, with its world and be creative and there are moments in this you know we see the the new version of the stasis power we see we've got uh new ways to mess with stuff that's what's really exciting to me in this yeah i'm i'm wondering and let's just check the pulse on this one do, do you all think that breakable weapons will return i feel like that was such a core part of the last game it seemed like people came around to it you know like it, it, it was an issue early on in the game when your weapons are breaking constantly back into the game doesn't seem like too much of a problem most people kind of liked it so what do you think about this one 
I, I don't know. I, I, I'm of two minds. I think that the weapon durability thing was like a major sticking point for a lot of people. Like a lot of people's issues with Breath of the Wild uh, come directly from the idea that like, oh, the weapon durability is bad. I personally really liked it because I thought it really, it really enforced the idea that you have to switch up weapons. You have to try different fighting styles. You have to try all these different things. And that's why they're showering you with these weapons constantly, right? So um, I would like to see it make a return. Maybe that durability could be increased so that stuff isn't breaking as often for folks mm -hmm. that didn't dig it in the first place. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's a core tenet to what Breath of the Wild is as a new, you know, entry in the, the Zelda series. So I'd like to see it stick around. Yeah, I, I actually wonder if some of the arm mechanic stuff could maybe potentially be a standby weapon that you do have in case of emergency mm. when all your <laughs> weapons break. That's a good way of sort of meeting fans in the middle of going, hey, we kept the weapon breakability stuff, but also, you know, if everything goes south, you have this unshatterable firearm Mega Man style and you can do cool stuff with it. No, I like um, that. Yeah, how do you feel about like the 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 weapon combat and stuff like that in in this game, Joe? Do you think they're going to expand on this a lot? Maybe just dump in tons and tons more weapons, or where do you think this will go? I guess I, to me, it looks more, and you know, who knows what they're leaving out of a trailer. But to me, it looks more like they're emphasizing the idea that you can do different things as Link innately, as you say, like that kind of backup set of stuff. You know, you have your your you have your bomb power and and that kind of stuff. I could see that kind of thing being expanded. To me, like I'm also a big fan of the weapon durability. And I think what they'd lose by getting rid of it if they did, and you know, we're way into speculation now, is the idea that, you know, Breath of the Wild gave you so much. It really rewarded you at every turn. Like you would go around a corner and find new stuff and it felt like you were constantly being given things for looking around you. Right. And I think you would lose that if you were, you know, kind of pairing back how many times you were finding things so i think like you say i think there's a there's a great midpoint there by going look here's an expanded arsenal of powers that you always have and also all the other stuff that you can find around the wouldn't expect that to go go too wild beyond that Casey, very quickly, um, we still haven't seen dungeons, and that's something that a lot of us are asking for. We did see the castle lift up in the air, which seems to me like the kind of awesome cutscene you would see before going into a dungeon in a Zelda game. But uh, most of this still is kind of still above ground. Do you think we'll get dungeons in this game? Is or, are there anything here leading you to think that we will? I think even more so than the... fall down into the depths and i don't i think might be reading into this a little bit but that might suggest that we have to go down into a dungeon to rescue i hope not rescue her i'm kind of done rescuing people but <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll go down there or maybe zelda will be doing the dungeoneering while the two links from different timelines are doing things above and in the sky and and look at that. We, we've we've veered directly into like fan we've made our own fan game at this uh -huh. point this is great there you go um, can, I, well, can, we... I, can I put an idea out there? Yeah, Wait, real what quick, about... let's hear it. Oh yeah, what about if those islands up top, which are, you know, limited spaces, what if those are your dungeons? You know, you, you have the, the ground, you know, Hyrule Field to explore, but when you go up, that's your space that's, to, yeah. to maneuver I'm around. I'm into that. Yeah. That's a sort of like reverse dungeon upside down thing. That's great. I'm very into it. Uh, that would be new for Zelda. Uh, well, we have tons more Nintendo to talk about in just a minute. But first, we will take a very, very short break. So take a deep breath. We will gather our thoughts because there's tons more Nintendo announcements to talk about. Today was awesome. IGN will return right after this. So don't go anywhere. Yeah. It's a link quote. IGN Summer of Gaming is powered by Duracell Optimum. All summer long, we're bringing you the game announcements, developer interviews, and all the demos you care about. So get comfortable and get ready to play. Upgrade your Xbox controller with Duracell Optimum batteries today. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, 
the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. Everybody loves watching a speedrun of their favorite game, but what if you got a chance to peek into the mind of the developers behind those games as they watch their hard work get completely destroyed right in front of them? What is happening right now? <laughs> That's exactly what happens on every episode of Devs React to Speedruns. We invite you to ride along with the developers as they watch, react, and enjoy some of the craziest gameplay by the most skilled speedrunners on the planet. Tune in every Saturday for a brand new episode. In a world with non-stop news about Marvel, DC, Star Wars, you need a show with accurate reporting, hard-hitting commentary, and... Me, Akeem Lawanson, host of IGN's news show, The Fix Entertainment. Whether it's the latest superhero scoop, film fiasco, or anime announcement, I'll be here covering all the breaking movie, TV, and streaming news that matters most to you. Make sure to catch The Fix Entertainment on IGN for your fix of entertainment news. Let's drop it. Afterwards, and we need to talk about all of it. I'm Brian Altano along with Casey, Zach, and Joe. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hi. Brian. Okay, Hello. so in the pre-show, we talked about Metro Prime 4. Still a logo, by the way. Mm -hmm. No additional updates there. But they did uh, let us know that uh, it's coming along. It's happening. Hasn't been canceled. But as a very, very awesome make good, we got the reveal of a brand new Metroid game, Metroid Dread, uh, an, a Metroid title that has been 16 years in the works, canceled multiple times, The brand, a brand new 2D Metroid game out October 8th for Nintendo Switch. Uh, Zach, let's start with you. How are you feeling about this? I mean, I really wanted to see Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. And <laughs> the next best thing is a 2D, a new 2D Metroid. Metroid Dread has been rumored and uh, uh, sort of secret for so long that it was absolutely astounding to see that name pop up on screen. And this game looks sick. Like, it really looks like a cool new take on a 2D Metroid game. I, I know we talked a lot during Treehouse, the Treehouse presentation about how this looks like kind of a survival horror thing. It's got a totally different vibe. It's doing a lot of different uh, stuff for the Metroid series um, that I'm really, really interested in. And the fact that it's coming in October is amazing, man. Like, I, I hope that we see Metroid Prime 4 soon. But in lieu of that, this is the next best thing. I, I can't wait to play any new Metroid game. And it's coming from Mercury Steam, the team behind Samus Returns, which is a game that I thought was pretty good. And so hopefully they'll take some of those learnings and apply them here, and we can have another awesome Metroid game. It would be uh, super cool if they took that game and put it on Switch, by the way, because I think also a that lot too. of people kind of slept on it. It came out towards the very end of the 3DS's life cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, K Casey, let's talk about this new robot, Emmy. <laughs> Emmy <laughs> looks terrifying. <laughs> yeah. So as we were watching in the Treehouse demo, I, even the people who were playing on the camera were being unnerved by Emmy. It seems like if it catches up to you, that's it, you're done. So Samus has a lot of different tools in her arsenal to uh, be stealthy. So I think she can use camo that makes her turn invisible or at least camouflage with the surroundings. And if you're standing still, Emmy can't hear you to come and uh, I, I think they use the word insta kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I also think uh, you might be able to kill Emmy as well, but it might not be worth the struggle. And I think also some of the suit's uh, survival mechanics, if you run out of energy, can then suck your life force to be powered instead. So there seems to be a lot of different risk and reward and management going on to try and stay away from this very scary robot which is only in certain areas of this map that you'll be exploring as samus 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that we were talking about earlier is some of the, and as Zach just touched on it too, some of the creature design um, is, is sort of very horror adjacent, or, or at least a lot deeper into the sort of horror aesthetic than you usually see from Metroid. Metroid obviously gets into, you know, some horror stuff. There are some, you know, ghastly, horrible, pussing, gigantic alien creatures. There's brains that you know, land on your head and you know, take all of what, whatever's inside you out of you. It's just horrible. Like they're just monsters and they're disgusting. But in this game, like they're, they're going with some like very kind of like distinctly kind of like ugly eighties, 90 uh, horror creatures that I, I'm really, really into it. Um, Joe, this is the 35th anniversary of the Metroid franchise. Uh, this is already more than I expected. I will say that my expectations for Samus's birthday party were extremely low. Uh, do you think we're going to get more than this? Do you think there will be even even more to celebrate here from Samus? I uh, I can't see them doing too much more. I you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see some some remakes or sorry re-releases of of older games, especially as I think one of the really interesting things that uh, the producer Sakamoto said in a in the Treehouse was is designed as the end of the Metroid story in the 2D Metroid games. Um, so it is a direct sequel to the 2D games we know. Uh, and he said, you're meant to go through this game trying to work out why this is the end of that story. And so I could see them, you know, I could see them giving us a sort of uh, re-releases that act as a run-up to the story of this game, mm -hmm. maybe something along those lines. But they also said there is a prologue you can watch if you've never played any of them and get get up to speed with that with that story. That's super interesting. And it ties into another little detail they said in the Treehouse as well, which is that whereas most Metroid games are about starting on the surface of a planet and working your way down into the core, this starts you in the core and has you trying to get out to get to the surface, which is not right. just like a really good horror story, it, like The Descent or something. This is, it also feels like, is this the end of her career? You know, is this Samus's <laughs> bounty hunting career? Is she trying to get out and retire, like fly right. off and just not come back to these horrible planets full of brain children? Like, I'd love to know where, where they're going <laughs> with that stuff. Samus retires sounds like a retro game title. <laughs> yeah, it really um, does. You know, I really like the idea of a prologue. What if, if only there was another way to catch up Metroid fans on the classic Metroid games on Switch? God, it, like sort of collection or ports, <laughs> literally anything. I mean, like there are so many. This is a you know a sequel to Fusion. Uh, Metroid uh, Prime Zero Mission is an awesome, awesome remake of the original. Of the first uh, one. Of mm -hmm. the first one, yeah. Samus Returns is a remake of the the Game Boy one. These would be great games to put on Switch. I, I, I just really, really hope we get to see those things. Um, Zach, 15 years in the making for this game. It's got some stealth elements this time around too, but I'm also seeing like lots, it seems like some new moves. How do you feel about the sort of like fusion between, no pun intended, uh, yeah. kind of classic run and gun Metroid style and some of the more sort of uh, overt, like kind of almost like Ninja, Ninja Gaiden-esque uh, combo kills that we're seeing in this game? Yeah, I really, up. I really love how fluid the... the like the the idea that you have a, a tracking shot, the tracking shot from Samus Returns, but now you can do that while you're in motion. You can slide. Um, there's you know uh, the uh, I forget what the the uh, counter attack is is back from Samus Returns. There's a lot of cool things. Honestly, like watching it, it's it it looks like the kind of game to me that that. You're gonna to want to watch speed runs of. You're gonna to want to watch like pro right. players playing it on Twitch because like when folks are really in the groove, I bet this game looks fantastic in motion. Like the all the kinds of stuff that you can pull off. And um, uh, and I'm hearing that my mic is really terrible, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's happening there, but um, it's okay. Zach is getting a, a transmission from uh, the mothership. And <laughs> That's right. Being beamed up to Zeb so he can fight some wretched creatures. Casey, quick question for you: Did you pre-order the amiibo? I I did not. I was unable to pre-order the amiibo. I was able to pre-order that uh, Zelda game and watch the whole. That's good. Me but too. The, Me too. Yeah, the Amiibo and the special edition of Metroid Dread are is sold out. Sorry. <sighs> uh, keep refreshing. Follow IGN deals on Twitter. Hopefully those will get restocked and we'll get your back. Uh, but we do have to take a quick break. We have lots more Nintendo to talk about. But first, IGN Summer of Gaming is presented by The Tomorrow War, available exclusively on Prime Video, July 2nd, starring Chris Pratt and J.K. Simmons. So... The time has come for us to take a look at the latest trailer from Tomorrow War. Let's check it out. Boy, they say kids never come by unless they need something. Dad, I need your help. 
my God. 30 years. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. with non-stop news about Marvel, DC, Star Wars, you need a show with accurate reporting, hard-hitting commentary, and me, Akeem Lawanson, host of IGN's news show, The Fix Entertainment. Whether it's the latest superhero scoop, film fiasco, or anime announcement, I'll be here covering all the breaking movie, TV, and streaming news that matters most to you. Make sure to catch The Fix Entertainment on IGN for your fix of entertainment news. Let's drop it. Competition brings out the best in all of us. Well, mostly. Oh, that's a controller break. That's unfortunate. Welcome to IGN Compete, where we bring you the stories behind the esports headlines. From the triumphs, Daryl takes the game to the hardships, He's not happy. to the miracle moments that will go down in history. I just can't believe it. It's crazy. It's all here on IGN Compete. Out of disbelief. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. Everybody loves watching a speedrun of their favorite game, but what if you got a chance to peek into the mind of the developers behind those games as they watch their hard work get completely destroyed right in front of them? What is happening right now? <laughs> That's exactly what happens on every episode of Devs React to Speedruns. We invite you to ride along with the developers as they watch, react, and enjoy some of the craziest gameplay by the most skilled speedrunners on the planet. Tune in every Saturday for a brand new episode. Competition brings out the best in all of us. Well, mostly. Oh, that's a controller break. That's unfortunate. 
Welcome to IGN Compete, where we bring you the stories behind the esports headlines. From the triumphs, Daryl takes the game to the hardships, He's not happy. to the miracle moments that will go down in history. Hey, oh, I just can't believe it. It's crazy. It's all here on IGN Compete. Out of disbelief. In a world with non-stop news about Marvel, DC, Star Wars, you need a show with accurate reporting, hard-hitting commentary, and me, Akeem Lawanson, host of IGN's new show, The Fix Entertainment. Whether it's the latest superhero scoop, film fiasco, or anime announcement, I'll be here covering all the breaking movie, TV, and streaming news that matters most to you. Make sure to catch The Fix Entertainment on IGN for your fix of entertainment news. Let's drop it. And welcome back to IGN's E3 2021 Nintendo Direct post show. Uh, we saw the Treehouse, the Direct. E3 has been going on for a while, so it might sound like I'm stringing my words together, but there's actually even more E3 to come because in just a few minutes, the Bandai Namco showcase kicks off. And then on Thursday, join us again for the Xbox Extended Game Showcase and the Podcast Unlocked post show. If you missed any of this, literally any of it, you can catch up on all of it on IGN.com, on IGN's YouTube channel, across social media, even on your smart TV and you'll find even more content on E3's online portal featuring articles, videos, and more. We've got news, previews, trailers, gameplay breakdowns, interviews, surprises. There's so much E3. Here to say more about E3 and Nintendo specifically are my bestest friends, Casey, Zach, Joe. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's so nice of you, Brian, to call us your bestest friends. Well, just for now, that might change at any given moment because... And it's called WarioWare Get It Together, and it has co-op. I'm so happy yes. this game is returning. Uh, let's, Casey, let's start with you. WarioWare. Man. How do you, how do you so feel excited. about it? I love WarioWare. I might have very fond memories about playing this on the DS uh, in class. Totally. shouldn't be this excited about it but nine volt is the character whose mini games or micro games as we say are all based off classic nintendo games and i saw in the back as they're scrolling through claude from so we're gonna have a tea party micro game and i am that's all i need I'm yeah, sold. I noticed. I noticed that they uh, they did a, a micro game based on like with the brand new Animal Crossing graphics. Yeah. Where they're, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I guess maybe Nine Volts inclusion is less about <laughs> classic games. For, yeah, we can't just okay. There's a mini game where you can tweeze uh, chest hair off of a, a, a man <laughs> statue, which is just amazing. Get it together, uh, Brian. Get it. together. <laughs> Joe, this is out September 10th. I feel like that's a good time for this game, right? Like it's not competing against a up ton of stuff. It's also 50 bucks. Are you are you excited about the return of WarioWare as much as I am? A hundred percent. Like, so I I played a lot of the one on uh on GBA. Uh, yep. I to the point where I left it out in the sun, the battery started leaking acid, and I would continue to, to <laughs> play that game. Um, like, yeah, it's just it's just one of my favorite Nintendo series, and I thought it was a really good marker of this show in particular like they seem to be showing some love to series that we haven't seen for a long time like mm -hmm. warrior where we're going to get on to advance wars like some of these kind of classic for want of a better term b tier franchises from nintendo are getting another push and i'm so excited to see this and not like a game and warrior wii u take on this like a real new micro game warrior where game I, I, I couldn't be happier that this is coming Zach, you and I did a small show together called Link Together. We played uh, Breath of the Wild co-op style. This game has dedicated co-op. Uh, should we do it? Should we play it together? I, I'm going to say no because <laughs> I, val I value our friendship. And I, I think like the idea of trying to play these middle these mini games, micro games uh, across one controller, <laughs> l let alone like the co-op of it is would be so infuriating, um, but fun. Like I love WarioWare so much. I'm so glad that there's a new one uh, for Switch. I think a lot of us have been asking for WarioWare to come back uh, or at least make its way to the Switch for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's awesome that it's finally here and it's coming so soon. September is, you know, only a couple months away at this point and i completely agree with joe this whole showcase was really amazing for showing off some of the franchises that are maybe like lesser known or lesser right. beloved um and uh you know i see a lot of people tweeting about how like hey this presentation cliche as it is 
it really did have a little bit of some something for everyone you know like there <laughs> is if you love the a nintendo franchise there's something here for you and like this one specifically spoke to me because i freaking love wario Air, man i wanted to talk about another franchise we saw return today advance wars is coming back mm -hmm. uh reboot camp is out december 3rd it's a remake of the first two games we just found out that that's being done by way forward who are immensely mm -hmm. talented and been doing awesome stuff uh with and for nintendo for a very long time now um advance wars reboot camp is basically the first two GBA games with a brand new art style. Um, how are we feeling about this one? Zach, I'll start with you. So freaking pumped. I love Advance Wars. Advance Wars, if, you know, longtime NVC listeners and fans will know that that Advance Wars and Fire, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Advance Wars and F Zero are the two franchises that Pear and I are constantly going back and forth about. Like, where is Advance Wars? Where is F Zero? Has Nintendo completely forgotten about these? So it's so awesome to see these, even just remakes, reimaginings of the original ones, because it at least gives us an, a, an idea that like. Nintendo still has these around, like they still are thinking about these franchises. And honestly, these first two games are phenomenal. And this is a great opportunity to reintroduce this franchise to a whole new generation of gamers, a whole new generation of potential fans. I think the the big thing here is this art style. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like I'm seeing a lot of chatter about, you know, the pixel art was perfect, uh, the people not particularly loving the way that this looks. I'm fine with yeah, it. I think it looks too. awesome. I love the toyetic design. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Link's Awakening remake. Um, yeah. So like, I'm I'm super into this, and I, I I can't wait. You know, it's tough because this year I made a resolution. I said I was not going to replay any games that I've previously played. I was only going to focus on you know playing new games. But uh, I'll definitely make an exception for these two games because these are bangers. <laughs> Uh, one one last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Tekken and Smash Brothers together at last. Uh, Kazuya has been added to the roster. He killed Kirby. Uh, Ganon was <laughs> was murdered. There was a lot going on there. Uh, the one of the two Smash Brothers drops uh, we're going to get for characters. Um, we're at the very tail end of that that very long long game development cycle. Smash Brothers is almost done. Uh, mm -hmm. Casey, real quick, are you excited for this one? Uh, uh, I liked the art. And also Kirby <laughs> did not get killed because Kirby is indestructible. He's the final final survivor in the original Ultimate trailer, and he survived and got away scot-free from Kazuya as well. All it's right. up to him to save everyone from Kazuya. <laughs> well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have all survived uh, throwing off the cliff that is E3, uh, but there's just a mm -hmm. little bit left. Uh, I want to thank my Nintendo friends here, or my Super nin Nintendos. Uh, for, for rocking with us. Uh, coming up next, we have the Bandai Namco E3 presentation. So let's see what else the studio behind Dark Souls, Elden Ring, and Baruto have in store for E3. <laughs> or we can keep hanging out. I'm down yeah. with that. Yeah, are we still yeah. up? Are we still, are we still up and running? All right. Because oh, no. there we go. Ah, right. There it is. Bye. Thanks for watching, everyone. Satellite sweeps of the war zone have uncovered what appears to be an underground storage facility. But I strongly suspect where chemical weapons are hidden, so we need to move fast. Ready to, go, guard. to descend into the unknown alone is extremely brave. Out, hold fire. Or extremely foolish. We're gonna sigh out this shit. Brothers in arms, or will it be a case of each man for himself. Get down, get down. They're up on the race. Return fire. You teeter on the edge of an abyss. Oh, shit. Your survival depends on the choices you make. They will be as a compass guiding you through the unknown. We're on God's green earth that we landed. What nightmare have these luckless souls fallen into? You keep lookout. Look out for what? One by one, their lights will be snuffed out. Unless you can find the means to save them. Trapped beneath the earth, swallowed we have to move. Let's go. by the void. Will you find the path to salvation? Or be lost in the darkness? Forever.
we're here at Supermassive to talk about the next game in the Dark Pictures anthology, House of Ashes. And I'm joined by exec producer Dan. How are you doing? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Right, really cool. so let's start at the very start. We're going to be talking about House of Ashes for most of the interview, but for those that don't know, tell us about the Dark Pictures anthology. The Dark Pictures is a series of narrative, story-driven, branching horror stories. Each one is standalone. They each tell a different story, completely separated from the others, but within the same universe, so there is connection between them all. House of Ashes is set at the end of the Iraq War in 2003, with links um, 4,000 years ago that set the story up. So tell us more about the theme and themes, I suppose, within um, House of Ashes. It starts off with a, a military unit. They've got some new technology that can look for weapons of mass destruction underground. They think they've identified something in the Zagos Mountains in Iraq. And then as part of that, they come into conflict with an Iraqi unit. There's a pitched firefight. And then the two groups are plunged underground. There's an earthquake of some sort. And it's revealed that there's a hidden temple underground. You know, these big, massive structures. But these different groups, they're all separated. Um, radio contact is lost. And they're submerged in this black uh, darkness. Where on God's green earth have we landed? And then they're going to start hearing things and seeing things and people are going to start disappearing. What the f*** just happened? So this time, it's a very real threat. All of the Dark Pictures games, they all pull something from, from real life or from history, from fact. What's the case with uh, the myth or historical part of, uh, of House of Ashes? So we love looking at, um, looking at and reading myths and legends and stories and doing our research. And we know our fans love it as well because there's something that they can link into afterwards. And, and I love doing that when I'm playing games and watching movies myself. So this one's set 4,000 years ago, the Akkadian Empire and this terrible evil that happened. We had this self-proclaimed God King, Naram Sin, and he essentially cursed his people. He sacked this temple and brought famine and, and devastation to his own people. And so a lot of the history is lost, but we've, we've done a lot of research about it. And then we had a lot of happy accidents that linked into the story we wanted to tell. And the fun thing for us is we get to, we get to do our own take on it. Mm. We get to twist it. And, and obviously we've made our own truth from it. At the end of the sneak peek, the trailer, we saw monsters. Tell us a bit more about what's going on there. The military unit that you're playing as, they don't really know what they're coming up against. They're not human. They're bigger, they're larger, they're faster. The team aren't going to know if there's one or two of them or hundreds or thousands of them. And that's kind of the threat with this, you know, they've got guns, maybe they could try and take one of them down. But maybe there's another one around the corner, or maybe there's a group of them, and maybe they're gonna get ambushed. Maybe they're like a cluster. Exactly, and yeah, they all pop a out nest, once. as it were. Yeah. And it's been really fun to work on and, and see these things move around and how horrific they can be. They're different to us, they perceive the world in a different way. Getting little snippets of it in the darkness, and was that, did I see that? Mm. Was it something that moved? Um, or is it actually just one of the other soldiers that's yeah. stuck in the catacombs? Who's there? We like to try and misdirect people on things, you know, that did you see something, did you not? And that's a great thing within horror, that you think you're going to be scared right now. And we're not going to scare you now. We'll scare you in a minute it's when you're coming. not expecting it. It's always coming. Yeah, always. Okay. So should we expect a huge amount of, of peril in the game? Definitely. Um, we love to do it. Um, you know, it's fun, fun for us to work on, as horrific as it is, and it's, we know that our fans love it as well. So yeah, there's at least 60 unique deaths, and there's a whole ton of variation on that as well. So Merwin and some of the others, you're going to see different things happening to them, depending on how you play it out, you know, getting ripped and shredded and torn. And because there's a firefight, there's going to be bullets flying as well and all kinds of stuff. And it's not just the deaths, it's the gore that goes along with it. and you know, lots of blood. Wicked. It sounds absolutely terrifying. I'm, I'm in. No, it's not going to lie, man. It's pretty bad. What differences have you made or changes have you made to the to the gameplay and mechanics for House of Ashes? We're always evolving the dark pictures. Um, we listen to a lot of the uh, feedback from our fans mm -hmm. um, and, and also our team, what they want to do, how they want to push things forward. So we, we tried some stuff in, in Little Hope with um, you know more camera control, 360 cameras at certain parts, and we've really leaned on that again, and it really works well in House of Ashes, lots of the game is set underground, and so these sort of corridors, which are really tight and oppressive. It's creepy. Yeah, indeed. So, <laughs> so we've had to learn because you, you take away the fixed cameras, and that takes away some opportunities mm. for horror. But we've had to learn new tricks to scare people and you know ramp up the tension and, and uh, you know the, the chance for jump scares, which we know some people love. We've also got a new torch mechanic, so um, you know it's military themed. So these guys are going to be walking around with weapons with uh, torches mounted on them. We love the lighting that we do, this sort of really inky black darkness that we have. 
uh, and sort of the contrast to the bright areas. And so you're going to need to lean on that torch to allow you to see where you're going, what the threat is, and that kind of stuff. We've also done things like um, added difficulty settings to this game. So in Little Hope, we added uh, you know, QTE warning icons as an example, and we've got some really good positive feedback about that, but also some people want to turn that off. We want to allow you to play the game in your way. So with our accessibility settings and difficulty settings, if you want to have a more casual experience, you can change those settings. Still, most of your characters are going to end up dead, but you know, that's, that's Spoilers, what Spoilers, yeah, indeed. but that's what we come here for. That's yeah. okay, we can deal with it. So I've got to ask, what was it like working with Ashley? So Ashley was fantastic. She researched Rachel. She understood her when she came mm -hmm. on the set, which is so refreshing. She knew her inside out. And Rachel is a flawed character, so she brought that through so fantastically. The rest of the cast were fantastic as well. When we were looking for Joey, Salim helped me. You didn't tell me this because... You'd flip your shit. We want you to connect to these characters and understand them as humans. We want them to seem real because they're real to us. You know, we spend a long time designing them. And, and I don't mind if you hate any one individual character because you don't like everyone in real life. But maybe you'll like them when you see the journey they go on. Maybe you'll like them once they're dead and you yeah, feel bad about it. Yeah, and you feel bad yeah. about it, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But also we want you to save them. We want you to try and save them. You know, we know that some people want to get everyone killed straight away and that's fine. That's their that's playthrough, cool. that's yeah. what they want to do. But, you know, can you get everyone out alive and save as many as you can? It's a lot of replayability there. Indeed, it's yeah. It's on forever. I like yeah. that. So, last question. Favourite scene? Favourite scene. So, um, Salim, our Iraqi soldier, and Jason Kolchak, one of the Marines that's there, there's a way that that can play out and a sort of contest between them. And you can make it go in a number of different ways. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's really emotional. Seeing them film it, I was lucky enough to be there and then seeing that come through in game, I think we've got something there. I think that's gold. Um, and then, of course, I love scaring people, so I love the jump scares. I love the, the moments of tension uh, that we bring. We can't hold you in that moment, so we've got some fantastic jokes in there as well to allow you to relax for a moment before we scare you again. <laughs> to take your mind off yeah. the imminent threat. I like that. Dan, thank you so much. This has been really cool to talk about, and I'm sure, you know, I, I, I'm excited and terrified in equal part and everyone else is just excited i'm sure of it. and it's been a real pleasure to speak to you and i can't wait to get it into people's hands it's gonna happen Before we dive in. Before we dive in, the House of Ashes. See how scared you got. Of course, we want to thank Razor for being one of the E3 2021 sponsors. Of course, giving us these tired old blades nobody cares about. But this Blade Ooh, 14, girl. RTX 3080 built right in. Of course, the Razor I'm chair. taking that. Thank you so much. No, I'm taking that. Oops. Okay, we'll fight. Okay, well, well, we've done it before. You know what? I'll take the hand-me-down. I'll be, I'll, I'll be a little.